called The Twelve Dancing Princesses by Jacob and Willamine Grimm. And that's the Grimm Brothers, illustrated by Dorothy Dunce. Okay, boys and girls, let's start the story. Once upon a time, there was a king who had 12 beautiful daughters. They all slept together, their beds standing side by side in a great room. Every evening, once they had gone to bed, the king closed and bolted the bedroom door. And every morning when he opened it, he found holes in their shoes. How it happened remains a mystery. One day, the king proclaimed that any man who discovered how the princesses wore out their shoes each night could choose one of them for their wife and the rule the country after the king's death. However, if he failed to solve the mystery after three days and three nights, he would be executed. Before long, a king's son came to try his luck. He had made he was made welcome, and in that evening, he was given a room next to the great bedroom where the princesses slept. A bed had been made ready for him, but he was not to keep watch and find out where the princesses went. The door of their bedroom was left open so that they could not do anything in secret or leave by any other way. However, the eyes of the king's son felt as heavy as lead. He fell asleep. and. When he awoke the next morning, the twelve princesses' shoes were in holes again. The same thing happened the second evening and the third evening, too. So the prince's head was cut off without mercy. Many others came after him, hoping to solve the riddle, but they all lost their lives as well. One day, a poor soldier who had been wounded in battle met an old woman on the road, and she asked where he was going. I hardly know, he said, and added for a joke. Though I wouldn't mind finding out how the king's daughter wore holes in their shoes and become a king myself one day. That's not so difficult as you think, said the old woman. Just don't drink the wine they bring you in the evening and pretend to be fast asleep. Then she gave him a cape and said, If you put this cape on, you will be invisible, and you can follow the twelve princesses unseen. The soldier took this good advice seriously, plucking up his courage. He went to see the king and said he had come to seek the hand of one of the princesses in marriage. He was working hospitably as the other suitor and giving rural clothes to wear. He was given, he was taken to the room next to the princess's great bedroom. As he was getting ready for bed, the eldest princess brought him a goblet of wine. However, the soldier had tied a sponge under his chin. He let the wine run into the sponge and did not drink a drop of it. Then he lay down, and when he was, he had been lying there for a while, he began to snore as if he was asleep. On hearing the snores, the twelve princesses laughed, and the elder said, There's another man who's, who's tired of life. The princesses got up, opened their chests and their wardrobes, and took out magnificent gowns. They dressed in front of the mirror, skipping about and laughing. All except the youngest princess who said, You all, you all so merry, but I feel very strange, though I don't know why. I'm not sure, I'm sure some misfortune is going to happen. You're, you're a silly goose, said the eldest princess. You're always afraid of something. Don't you remember how many king's sons have already tried their luck and failed? When they all were ready, they looked at the soldier, 
but he had closed his eyes and was lying perfectly still, so they felt sure he was asleep. Then the youngest, eldest princess went over to her bed and tapped it. It immediately sank into the floor, and they climbed down through the opening one by one, led by the oldest. Okay, boys and girls, if you want to read this book, go to your public library and get The Twelve Dances, Dancing Princess by Brothers Graham, illustrated by Dorothy Dunst. Okay, let's see what's coming up next on the Mr. Peavy Show. Hello, hello, boys and girls. Welcome to the Mr. Peavy Show. I have a very, 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 very special guest on my show, and I would like her to introduce herself and her friends. Hi, I'm Deborah Shell. I own Wings Over America. We're a sanctuary and rescue for birds. This is Chumley. Chumley's an umbrella cockatoo. This one up here is Cruiser. Cruiser is an Ecolectus, and then Big Bear, and Bear is a green wing macaw. Okay, you know what? what, what, did, what for example, where did these birds come from? Um, they come from all over the world, Mr. Peavy. Chumley comes from Australia. Oh! Um, Ecolectus, which okay. is Cruiser, here. Fantastic. He comes from the Paradise Islands. Oh. And in fact, the females are all red. Oh! It's really cool. What color are the males? Are they all green? They're all green. And the males are green, the females are all red. Fantastic! Okay. Oh, he's beautiful. He looks like a rainbow. <laughs> this is Bear, and he's a, a green wing macaw, oh and he comes goodness. from South America. He's fantastic. Thank you. Okay, now you know what I've heard? that the birds live a long time. What are the ages of your birds? Well, this Chumley is 10 years old, and Chumley can live up to 100 years. Oh, my goodness, okay. I'm 95 years old. <laughs> he, wow. he can live longer than you can, so you're oh. going to have to put him in your will. I, I won't have to do that. Um, Bear is four years old, and he can live about 80 years. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And Cruiser up there, yes, Cruiser is four years old, and he can live about 80 years also. Oh my goodness! They can draw Social Security. They sure can. Oh my goodness! So this birds. So what do you feed? What do you feed them? Well, most birds are first of all they're not vegetarians, oh. so they eat a lot of meat. Oh. Um, they also eat a good seed and pellet diet and a lot of good vegetables, and a lot of good pot roast. Oh, you know what? Now, the boys and girls out there, when you said they're not vegetarian, what about bird seed? The, most birds, all your birds should eat a balanced diet, not just bird seed. Oh. Okay, pellets, a, a mix of pellets and seed, and 55% of all birds' diet needs to be people food. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh-huh. Oh. And most birds, almost even your little tiny parakeets, oh. okay, need to eat meat. Meat? Meat. No, Chick what, what kind of meat? Like steaks? Any kind of meat, as oh. long as it's cooked and it's cooked and it's cut up small enough for them to eat. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. You know what? Boys and girls, that is, some, that is fantastic information. So they need to eat meat? What about in vegetables? How about desserts? Well, the only thing you can't feed a bird is chocolate. Okay. Okay. Um, and it's usually baker's chocolate. It's just like in a dog. Uh -huh. And you know how chocolate's not good for us either. Exactly, it's not, boys and girls. <laughs> well, Chumley's just getting really antsy over here. Oh, can I see Chumley? Yes, you can may. Would fantastic. you like to go sit? Oh. Am I? Would you like to sit with Mr. Peavy? Oh my goodness! Step up. He's there. so cute. And Say he's how old again? How old is Chumley? Chumley is four, uh, ten years old. Do they all come in different colors or the same color, white? Well, they come in different colors, but they're usually a p from a pink to a white. <laughs> come he's on, so Chumley. so friendly. Thank you. I love him. And um, then you have the big palm cockatoos, which are black. Now, how do you tell a male from a female? 
you have to have these guys DNA sex. Okay, the males and the females don't look any different. Oh my goodness! Now, what, how do the birds tell them apart? Tell them, <laughs> oh, you just give Mr. Beebe a I kiss. Love, I love you. <laughs> I love you. How sweet! Can you say hello? Hello. <laughs> He's. Well, how many words can he say? Chumley can speak quite a few words. He can speak well over a, a hundred words, and it's oh, not just goodness. what. Oh, you want to go back on his arm? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. He's so cute. <laughs> oh, you're oh. gonna sit cuddle up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Now, what about the other birds? What can they, uh, vocabularies? What can they say? Okay, the echolectus actually. This is the green one up here. Is the best speaking bird in the entire bird kingdom, Ooh. even over African greys. These little guys can cle speak clearer and oh better than goodness. any species. Oh my goodness, he could be a news reporter. Yes, he can. Goodness gracious. Now, for, all, for the boys and girls, how do you start training your birds to talk? What do you do? Well, what most. Do do? Come on, Jubbly. I love Jubbly. Most yeah, birds, yeah. it's just interacting with your bird and repetition and just talking with them, um, treating them like you would a three year old child. Oh. Basically, it's the same principles. Oh, so, okay? so in other words, if I want to train. Chumley, what age? What's a good age? You should start them off at what should, age? About six months old. Okay. Okay. And birds aren't colorblind. Oh! They also see an ultraviolet. And Chumley's smart enough. I have a double yellow head at home oh. that actually knows all its primary colors. Then we'll pick them out. Oh, my birds, goodness. Birds are very, very smart guys. They are smart. And I don't know all my colors. <laughs> <laughs> Also, too, uh, the boys and girls would love to know, um, how can you go about getting a bird from well, your place? Well, if you come into our shop okay. at 3100 Wilmington Pike, it's Wings Over America. Fantastic. Um, we usually do applications for our rescues. We have quite a few rescues there. Um, it depends on the age of the person. I do not allow kids to adopt you know, Amma's big birds. And, um, but we have some wonderful little parakeets. Oh, I love parakeets. And cockatiels, and uh, some beautiful different finches. And we have a really sweet little uh, parrots called pocket parrots. Oh my goodness. Okay, and they're really, really nice little guys. Oh. So there are quite, you can come into the shop and bring your parents with you. And just look around and we'll sit down and discuss what you want. Now you said you're a rescue. What does that mean? You rescue birds that let out in their cages or what is, what is that? Well, we, we rescue birds just like dogs and cats need oh. help. So do birds. Oh. Okay. Now, now what, what type of rescue do you do? Like maybe someone had a bird that flew out of the cage, is that the Well, Chumley, for instance, four years ago was abandoned in a house. Oh. Okay. Um, and a lot of birds get dumped, basically, oh or abandoned. Some, the Humane Society calls us when they uh, go in and decide an environment is not healthy for certain animals, oh and they'll find goodness. birds there. Oh my goodness, that's sad. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Come here, Cruiser. <laughs> They're just so beautiful. So, in other words, you rescue birds and you find them good places like uh -huh. adoption. We That's adopt fantastic. them out. Fantastic. So, the boys and girls, uh, do you have a phone number you can tell the boys and girls? Yes, call, we do. It's 937 396 0950. That's fantastic. Now, I, I'm just so just flabbergasted to have these beautiful birds on my show. Um, Oh, I'm just, I'm speechless. Well, thank you for having us here. I love, I love them. I love them. I really, and Chumley's my favorite. <laughs> Chumley's Chumley my seems favorite. to be everybody's favorite. Chumley, can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, boys and girls. Bye-bye. for the Mr. Peavy Show. Yeah. Bye. Hi, boys and girls. This is bob Bob the Clown. Welcome to my art room. Today, boys and girls, we're going to make a puppet. 
And you really don't have to have a lot of materials to make puppets. Actually, the material you need, you have at home. Everyone wears socks, okay? And everyone wears socks to a point that they have holes in them, they get really dingy. So when your mom get ready to throw those socks out, tell mom, hey mom, don't throw that sock out. I'm gonna make a sock pu puppet. So this is what we're gonna do. This is an old dingy sock. It has a hole in it somewhere. There it is. Here's the hole. See? A hole in it. And we're gonna make a sock puppet out of that. Now, notice the puppet, uh, notice the sock has a, you know, the ankle part and the toe. So we're gonna work on this side here where you see the, um, the, the ankle goes, okay? So what we're gonna do, I want you to open that out like this, boys and girls, when you get your sock puppet, and fold it in half. This is the place where we're gonna put his face, okay? Or she, her face, it doesn't have to be a, a necessary guy. Now, you can use a variety of things. I've got all kinds of stuff in my art room. I've got different color little puppy balls here. Ooh, these are really neat looking. You know, really neat, you can do a lot. And I've got buttons. See, one thing about, um, this, you can just use almost any, anything uh, to, to, to decorate your sock puppet, okay? And I also think I have some um, I fa uh, fabric. Uh, if my assistant Misty could look in one of those uh, things over there and find uh, some fabric, we could probably use some fabric too. Or um, if she cannot find anything, we'll just improvise. Okay, first of all, uh, boys and girls, I think we need to make eyes. And one thing about this, you don't really have to use needles, okay? And we're not gonna use a needle. We're gonna use uh, glue. And it's good to get some glue, uh, like glue all, something that is uh, durable, that will last, and that will not uh, fall off. Now, one thing about gluing, you gotta let it sit, okay? So you got to wait until it's, um, so that's okay if you can't find that's all right. We'll probably get some of that tissue paper right there with, at your foot there, we'll use that. And said, you always improvise, boys and girls. Always improvise when you're doing artwork. Thank you, Misty. Um, you can use fabric, you can use tissue paper, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Okay, first of all, I think I'm gonna use buttons for the eyes. I'm gonna, I've got a, a dark button here. I'm gonna see over here if I can find another dark button. Okay, if not, you can have two different color eyes. You doesn't have to have a, a dark button there. It's a big button there and Oh, let's do that. Let's do that. I like that. We got two different color buttons. It doesn't have to. So right now, I'm going to place some glue. I'm going to do this upside down so you guys can see it. I'm going to place some glue here. And I'm going to put the, uh, can everybody see that? Can everybody see that? Uh, Tiki, can you see that? Okay. And I'm going to put uh, some glue here on this side, boys and girls, to make, to place the other button. Okay. Then we need to, no, don't bother that. It's got to set for a while before it uh, dries. Also, too, I think it's powder, this little uh, puffy ball here. I'm calling it puffy balls. So I don't know what, what you would name it. It would be cute for a nose. So we're going to place nose. And, and see how much glue I'm using, boys. I'm going to use a lot of glue, so I use a, but not enough that it spreads all over and gets really messy and stuff. So that's, that's going to be the thing here. Let's see. Hmm, how about some tissue paper? Because we didn't have any fabric. As I said, I thought I had brought uh, in my art room I had fabric, but next time I'm gonna have fabric. Okay, and we're gonna use some tissue paper. It doesn't matter, you just be improvised. One thing about art, you can improvise. I love art because if you don't have the material, you can make other things do. Okay, so I'm gonna get some tissue here and I'm going to cut. I think I'm gonna make some lips. I think my sock puppet needs lips, so I can take this and kind of measure that like so. Okay, put a little glue. Now, with the tissue paper, boys, you're going to have to be very careful because it tends to start dissolve if you use too much glue. So don't use a lot of glue. Don't use a lot of glue with the tissue paper. Just use a little, just a little dab of glue here. I'm going to put, if I can, I'm going to raise this up so you guys can see it here. There you go, the lips there. I'm raise it up just a little bit. You see the eyes and the lips, okay? Now next, boys and girls, I think I want some hair on my sock puppet, okay? So we're going to, I think get some yarn uh, to get, oh, I don't care what color yarn, it doesn't matter, red. Maybe try that red over there. Maybe we can throw that, I think I can catch that. 
if you throw it over here. Okay. Woo, good catch. Okay, we're going to pull out some yarn. And one thing about yarn, it's good to have around the house because you can use yarn and, um, you know, with, uh, doing a lot of projects with yarn and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out um, some yarn to make, to make a, um, some hair for our sock puppet. And then he's drying. Let's dry here. Okay. And let's just pull some yarn out here. And I'm going to just sort of kind of gather it up like this just to make it thicker, like this. Okay. And you don't have to, like I say. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, boys and girls, oh, that's going to look really nice. Look at that. Look at our sock pucket, puppet there. And then what I'm going to do, boys and girls, to keep this hair together, I'm going to take another string of yarn, and I'm going to tie it. Okay, tie it like this. I'm, I'm trying to keep from using uh, to, you know, a thread needle because you don't really have to have a thread needle for this project. One thing you need to do is just be patient with the, um, now we're going to put our uh, hair here, but we need to know how to attach the hair. I'm going, okay, this is what I want you to have your mother or father, your older brothers and sisters, somebody that's probably 10 years or older to help you with this. And they can, they can probably do this. I want you, them, for you. Not, don't do this yourself, boys and girls. Because I have pointed scissors, and I want you to put a hole in your sock, okay? Let's see if we can do that. Because it looks like, and how you can do that is this way. You don't have to use a point, just, just cut it like this. Okay, snip a hole in here. Okay, that's a hole here and slip another hole next to it, like that, okay? And the reason I'm doing that, I'm gonna tie my hair on here, okay? I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna put the yarn through the holes, and I'm gonna tie my hair on there, okay? Okay. And remember I said when you make knots, boys and girls, make sure you use two knots, one and two. Now, boys and girls, we've got our hair on our sock puppet. We have our mouth, okay, and I'm, I'm not going to raise this up too high because it's still drying. I think it, it, you probably need to have your sock puppet to dry for a couple of hours so you'll be able to keep your uh, uh, the buttons on. If not, they're going to slide off because they're not dry yet. But you can see now the sock puppet. And of course, when it's dry, you just put your hand through this, and you you hold your hand like this, the pot, you know, through the sock, and then you can. The bottom part will be uh, the bottom lip. Okay, so right now, so right now, boys and girls, like I said, let's review this. First of all, we had an old sock. We had buttons. If you don't want buttons, you can you can even use scrap some bits of material that your mother made if she sews or something. Uh, uh, Let's see, velvet, not velvet, what I'm saying, um, I forget the, the squares, little squares you can buy at the uh, fabric stores. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's escaping me. Sometimes Baba will clown, oh, where's my guitar? Maybe I'll get that guitar. Maybe that'll get me some, uh, make, okay. Uh, felt squares, see how the music make me think? That's what I was thinking about, felt squares. You can use that. Uh, felt squares are much better to use than tissue paper, but I didn't have tissue paper, so I improvised, okay? So right now, boys and girls, like I say, old sock, yarn, buttons, if you want for the eyes, or you can, you, you can make felt eyes. You can make, uh, uh, well, I use these little fuzzy balls that I have. Just look around the house, boys and girls, and ask your mom and dad for materials, and I'm sure that you can make a sock puppet. So, boys and girls, that's all we have for today. Bye-bye for Bob Bob the Clown.